Hey everyone, this is Mukesh Vatwani once again from learn-machine.com. Today in this lecture, I will be talking about how you can interact with web elements in Playwright. Okay. So in the last few lectures, we discussed what is Playwright install and how to write the first script in Playwright. So if you're completely new to this series, then I would highly recommend you watch this last three videos so that you can set up the environment and you can get started. Okay. Now in this video, I will be uh, taking a login form. So it's not a complete registration form. I will just show you to the login and logout activity. But once you're comfortable with that, then you could easily fill the registration form and other details as well. Right now in this form, we just have buttons. We have input fields and we'll try to do some assertion as well that let's say if login is done successfully or logout is done successfully or not. Once you're comfortable with that, then we'll talk about how to work with radio button, check boxes, drop down links and etc. So in order to continue, I'm using this particular application. This is only for demo purpose, but if you have any application, you can achieve the same thing, whatever approach I will show you. Okay. So in order to continue, first of all, I have to create a new spec file. In the last two lectures, we just created the sample and google.spec.js file. So in order to continue, I will create a simple one called login.spec.js file and now I just need the playwright, right? So I will be using require. So I will just use require, which is a node function. And I will say I need playwright test. I will simply store them. I will just extract page, uh, not page. I will say test and expect. So test function, which help us to write the test and expect is basically for assertion because I need to perform two assertion before login and after login. So this is the credentials admin admin one, two, three. The moment I log in with this credential, I need to verify the login is done successfully or not. So I can do uh, multiple assertions. I can check URL contains dashboard or not. This image is available or not. This search option admin is enabled or not, or maybe some charts are displayed or not. It could be anything, right? Our main uh, purpose is to make sure that we are logged in successfully. And same thing. If I just do the logout part, I just want to verify maybe this username should be available or maybe the URL should have the login part, right? So I will use the same. So in order to continue, I will use test function and I will just provide a name called valid login and I will use function inside the function. I will take the page fixture. Okay. Which will help us to interact with the web page. I will write await page dot go to. So go to is another method which will help you to open a particular URL. So in our case, let me copy this and let me just enter this here. Fine. Now the main part now I have to interact with the web elements. So I want to show you a couple of things. So right now at the time of recording this video, I'm using the latest version of playwright, which is 1.27. And in the latest releases, they have added a couple of locators. Okay. I will show you now a few of them. So Previously, this was not available. So we were using locator. I will show you both so that in case if you're still on the previous versions, you can still go ahead with the locators, but these are the new APIs available for interacting or, you know, locating with the web elements. Now let's go with the traditional manual first, or maybe I will do the combination. So let's, let's say I need to interact with this username. So first of all, I will right click on this and I will click inspect and just see the dome part. If you see, we have a class here, we have name, we have placeholder and there's some auto focus and some other attributes as well. I'm going to use placeholder because in the new API, we have a dedicated method for placeholder. Fine. So let me copy this placeholder and I will tell you if you don't have placeholder, what else you can do. Okay. So stick with me for some time. I will write page dot and just type G E T. You can see we are getting a lot of methods, right? So get attributes if you have to capture the attribute, but if you just type get by, you can see we have get by all text, get by label, get by placeholder, role, test ID, text, and this is get by title. Right now I copied the placeholder, right? So I will select this and I will use double quotes and I will pass the placeholder now. Now I need to type so I can use either dot type or dot fill. I'm going to use type and in double quotes, this is the username, which is admin. Now, if I, if I inspect again, uh, password, now you can see again, I have a placeholder, right? I have a class, I have a type and name and other stuff. 
if i want i can take the placeholder so you can go ahead with that but let me show you other ways as well now i'm using one of the plugin called selectors hub let me drag and drop here so if you're completely new to selectors hub then it's a chrome extension which will help you not only write the xpar you can validate you can do debugging you can generate the code out of this right there's so many features available in the selectors hub it's a browser extension please go ahead and install and you can start using selectors hub now the moment i inspect this you can see here i'm getting a couple of suggestions right i can use css selectors i can use xpath i can use index based xpath right and even i can use jquery later on in playwright we'll talk about how to use jquery with playwright for the time being let's say i want to use this name okay so i will use uh, copy this name i will write input see this is giving you auto suggestions if you want to go ahead with the auto suggestion you can go ahead otherwise i will directly type name and find a password this is exactly what i have written called css so i have a dedicated videos on how to write xpath how to write css selectors if you're completely new to xpath css i would highly recommend you to watch my last three videos i will give all of them in the description that is actually mandatory not only for playwright any automation tool you work you need the locators so i'm using a selectors path i have written a css i will copy this third one i will show you how you can go ahead with the uh, xpath okay now if i say get by we don't have any method right where i can use css so you have to use call locator it's a separate method and in double quotes the moment you open and close this parenthesis you can see it is asking you give me the selector in a form of string right so whatever selector i have written i will paste here it's showing one matching node now again i will say dot type uh again in double quotes admin one two three so username is done password is done now i have to use i have to click on this login button right now again if you notice here we have a type equal to submit i have a class even i have a text so i can use this let's say type equal to submit now i will generate one x path so i will use double slash and i will say find a button okay you can see we got one matching note but still i will give where type equal to submit i got again one matching note i will copy this come here page dot locator and in double quotes i will paste the x path see i'm not mentioning whether it's x path whether it's a css it's automatically understand that this is starting with double slash it is a x path if it is not starting it will take the css selectors now i will use click and it will perform the click okay now after this i need to verify right whether i will be able to log in or not or whether script is able to log in successfully or not so let me take this uh, dashboard that if i'm able to see the dashboard it means login is done successfully so url based assertion and title based assertion i showed you in the last video so i will use the same i will use expect okay see we have used this expect right so test i have used here i am using expect page dot to have url so basically we want to check url right now i will use to have url now i can give here the url or the expression okay if you want to verify the complete url you can give the exact url otherwise you can give a pattern too so i am expecting that it should have a dashboard okay so just add one forward slash give the uh, pattern that you're looking for and again one forward slash right now i'm just expecting dashboard nothing else now let's run this and see whether it's working fine or not now in order to run this uh, i will use i will open a terminal from uh, for this mac or i will just open the terminal from here right now you can see terminal is already open in case if it is not then you can just go ahead to this terminal click on new and it will show you so right now we are on uh, you can see this is my actual main folder playwright youtube so now i will just type npx uh, playwright test now the moment i hit enter what it will do it will run all these spec files right so it will run google.spec.js login.spec.js sample.spec.js 
But right now I'm more interested into this login.spec.js. So I what I will do, I will just say dot slash. Right now all of our scripts are available inside test folder, right? So I will say TES, TS, which is tests, uh, tests, then one uh, forward slash. Now I have to provide the file name, which is login.spec.js. So I will say login.spec.js and we're good to go. But here's a small disclaimer. The moment I hit enter, by default, the test will be running in the headless mode, right? It means I will not be able to see the execution. So I will add one option here called hyphen hyphen headed. It means I want to see my test in headed mode. It means the normal execution. Now let me execute this. Hit enter. Okay, so something went wrong. It says no test found. Just a second. Login dot spec dot chase. Just a second. Let's see this part. I did a small mistake guys. And this is how you have to understand what mistake you have done and how you can fix it. So if I see something here, it says one error was not part of your test. See above for details. No test found. Okay. Let's move ahead. It says unexpected reserved word await. So basically in order to continue, if you want to work with the promises, you have to use async for the function that we have actually missed. So I have to use async here, then I have to use await. So I was missing this async, that is the reason it was not running. So let me clear this and I will use upper arrow from my keyboard and let me hit enter. And yes, you can see it's running our test, started the URL. Okay, and here we go. This is a small issue with this application. You will not come across this issue very often. If you notice when I was showing you manually, it was coming in English, right? But now it's coming in a totally different language. So our test will fail obviously, and let's wait. And I will show you what error you will be getting. Okay, so let's wait. It will wait for 30 seconds actually. And yeah, here we go. So first of all, what happened? Uh, first of all, you can see it says test timed out of 30,000 millisecond. It means the test got timed out after 30 seconds. And how it is coming? Because in our configuration file, we have a timeout of 30 seconds. If you want to reduce this, you can reduce. By default, it's set to 30. Then it says waiting for selector and it is actually waiting for this placeholder username. Actually, since it's in a different language, it is not able to find username and it got failed. And you can see here line number seven, it is giving us this particular error. Same thing you will find here after login, it was not able to locate this placeholder called username and it failed. It's just a temporary issue only for this application. In your case, you will not come across this kind of issues. So let me wait for some time so that because generally what I have noticed, it comes back to English after a few seconds or minutes. So let me wait once it is back to English and we'll resume the video. Okay, so we are back now. I waited for a few minutes and this, as you can see, it's coming in different language now. At the moment I refresh, okay. Yeah, it's come back. It's actually coming in English now. So we can continue. So again, I will be running this. Last time it failed and it was expected, okay? Because if some weird is behavior is coming, it should fail, right? And it failed. So let me run it once again. Uh, this time, start it again. Yeah, load it. So until the page is not loaded, it will keep on waiting. The page is not loaded yet. Yes, it did admin use, uh, clicked on admin, admin one, two, three. Okay, and it failed, okay? Again, as expected. We entered admin as a username, okay? And admin123 as a password. So, this is again mistake from my side. A password is admin with a small a. I made it capital A, okay? See, every failure is giving you some output, some learning, so it's okay, let it fail, because every time you make a mistake, you will learn. I did a mistake from the credential side and it was failing. So this time it should work as expected. Yes, it entered and yes. Can you see it passed? 
it was too quick that after login the moment it found the url contains a dashboard it actually passed right so if you want to put a wait you can do that i will show you how okay so let's say you want to see you can put a await page dot wait for timeout see this is not recommended this is only for the debugging if you notice here it should be used only for debugging and i want to show you whether it logged in successfully or not right because it uh, passed and we could not see anything so you have to give the time in milliseconds so wait for given timeouts in milliseconds so maybe i will give 5000 only for debugging not recommended so after click it will wait for five seconds once the dashboard comes at least you will be able to see and then it will run yeah let's run it once again yeah it did use a password now it will wait for five seconds okay now dashboard as you can see after five seconds it will close perfect now let me show you that if i want to do logout also what else i can do so you can see here that if i have to log out i will click here then i will get this logout right so let's say i want to click this guy and if you see the dome structure we can have we actually have src if you want to write xpath or css based on src you can do that if you want to use class also you can do that you can write xpath or css and now you can see i have one more uh, alt attribute so basically in image you will be having the alt tag so in case this image is not visible at least you will see this text so we can take the advantage of this which is alt uh, sorry alt tag sorry alt attribute but the value is profile picture i will copy this and now i will use await page dot get by can you see i have a dedicated method now called get by alt text in in case if this is available go ahead so let's take the advantage and i will use click okay so it will click on that and after that i want to click on actually log out you can see here this is the text now again multiple options go with xpath css but there's a direct text available so i will copy this and let's use the new locator provided by playwright page dot get by text and this is actually very handy uh, method right because most of the time you will be getting a text and you just capture the text and continue after click or uh, i will say after log out again i need to verify okay the title contains login or not so i will copy this and await page sorry i have to do expect page to have url and i will just say forward slash login forward slash and again it will be very fast it will click click and it will exit so again i will put a timeout after click this i will keep for three seconds maybe and i will remove it later on after this demo run it once again it's hope it should not come in different language okay so back to english okay after five seconds okay something went wrong it failed again and let's see now there's another very interesting feature called strict mode violation okay in playwright what it says if you just notice here strict mode violation it actually found two elements with the same alt text we have given alt text called profile picture so it is able to find two elements with the same text so it found two now it says now where to click right now player got confused whether to click on the first one or the second one so now here either we can write a unique selector which will find only one matching node or basically this is returning you two right so i can give say that maybe this is returning me two elements i will say okay select the first one and then click okay now let's run it once again see in this small example you have seen many issues and you know the fix also right 
so yeah after five seconds it clicked and it clicked on logout and it came back to this and after three seconds it verified the login part and it is working as expected right we'll talk about what is first what is last what is end for the timing for the temporary workaround it found two elements it was not able to understand where to click so we said okay select the first one and continue in case of a unique one you will not come across this issue now finally let's see the report i will copy this command or i can just type npx playwright and show hyphen report okay so this is the spec file that we created right uh, which is login.spec.js and just notice one by one so before hooks after hooks is by playwright for opening the browser closing the browser these are the actual commands okay so it started with url typed admin admin123 then we did login and this is externally we have done not required but still it is capturing here we verified the url now notice this part okay n of zero so basically it found two we clicked on the first one then we clicked on logout wait for timeout and we are doing the verification okay very interesting and very easy to understand this okay and uh, right now we just have one it took 14.5 seconds to execute all of this fine so i hope you got this some uh, clear idea how to interact with web elements these are just type click i have shown you and uh, in the next videos we'll talk about drop down and other web elements if you're watching the video till then then i want to give a small trick or i was a tip so first of all let me remove this timeout right because it's making my scripts very slow if i don't give this my script should have been executed in hardly in five seconds right total 14 so i'm removing now these eight second additionally now the trick here is see it's typing very fast right but as a human we don't type so fast so i want to actually emulate the real behavior how a user will type i will type admin admin123 means i will type slowly right so i'll put comma here and you can see here i can pass multiple options so one of the option is called delay like how much delay you want to provide so you can see delay 100 millisecond it means for each character 100 milliseconds so if i just type let's say curly braces delay colon 200 it means for each character i will just give it a time of two uh, 200 milliseconds which is 0.2 seconds so now it will type slowly same thing i will do for this guy curly braces open and close delay and here i will put 100 millisecond don't put 1000 because for uh, let's say if you have to type mukesh it will take six seconds to type so 200 100 is okay now let me run this again and let's see yeah now just notice the behavior it will type slowly just like a normal user see now you're able to see what is happening initially it was very very quick and yeah let's execute it as, as expected yeah so that's all about this video so thank you so much for watching till the end and uh, if you want to support this channel then do share this video with your friends subscribe this channel like this video and if you have any other issues with playwright let me know in the comment section and i will see you in the next video Till then, bye-bye, take care.